I had a conversation the other day with a lawyer for the Center for Reproductive Rights who is pursuing the case in Texas after Kate Cox left the state to seek uh, health care. And I asked him, what, why are we pursuing it? We're very, very clear on where Texas is on this. And he said, we have to get to this. We have to exhaust that before some people will understand this is a completely political battle and it's going to have to be fought politically. We're going to have to do the stuff that you are trying to do. So let's talk about that. What is it that, what does success look like to you on a national level that guarantees reproductive rights? Well, ultimately we have to codify Roe versus Wade after the Dobbs decision, but we have to take the additional and necessary step of uh, telling the states that they can't uh, encumber these rights through the passage of state laws, which we have seen in states across the country. Um, I talked, we already talked about the 1849 criminal abortion ban in Wisconsin, but I can tell you our legislature has been very busy in recent years putting further hurdles uh, in the way of women seeking comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion care. And uh, we've seen the cases, the, the statutes in Texas and Florida that are so draconian, making uh, uh, access for uh, women to needed health care uh, uh, virtually impossible, as we saw in the case in Texas of Kate Cox. And I heard similar stories in Wisconsin abundant similar stories of people uh, uh, who were, uh, you know, who had crisis, crisis pregnancies and were unable to get services in Wisconsin. And, and as you mentioned, they've resumed care in two counties, but elsewhere in the state, uh, there is still no access. Let me ask you, because you have some experience in this, this is the uh, anniversary of your Respect for Marriage Act that you, yes. you passed that, 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 that enshrines LGBTQ plus equality, which, by the way, I think a lot of people thought was like abortion. We didn't have to we didn't have to deal with this, but we now realize you actually have Congress and, and state legislatures actually have to do these things. So let's talk about that. Given your experience with that, in fact, let me read from Newsweek. You wrote an op-ed about it. When people asked me what it was like to make history by passing this legislation, I gave a similar response to those who asked me what it was like being the first woman to be elected to Congress from Wisconsin or the first openly gay challenger to win election to the Senate. The point was never about making history. It was about making a difference. And with this bill, we were able to do both. So you've got some experience with this idea. Idea of codifying something that some people think already is a is a right that exists. Tell me how they overlap. Well, first of all, this uh, Respect for Marriage Act was made necessary by the Dobbs decision overturning Roe versus Wade, specifically uh, in Clarence Thomas's mm -hmm. uh, concurring opinion. He went after a number of other cases that had been considered well-settled precedent um, by name and basically invited uh, them to be relitigated in front of this new and activist Supreme Court. And people were actually terrified. You know, we had fought for so long to win marriage rights. We fought in legislatures. We fought ultimately uh, in the Supreme Court. And in the Obergefell ruling in 2015, uh, that right of marriage equality was granted. And now there are hundreds of thousands of couples who um, rely on the legal tools that are conferred in a marriage to protect their families, to protect their spouse, their children. And people were terrified that these were going to get ripped away after we saw 50 years nearly of precedent overturned by the Supreme Court in overturning Roe versus Wade. But I will also tell you that when we introduced the Respect for Marriage Act to uh, make sure that even if a future Supreme Court uh, were to reverse Obergefell, the marriage equality mm -hmm. decision, that people's marriages would still be safe. And that's what the Respect for Marriage Act did. And I heard from so many people who uh, had lost sleep uh, while we were working on passing this legislation, who now felt the certainty and the security that their marriage would be recognized at the national level and in every state. And um, uh, I heard from so many who said, I really felt seen by the federal government for the first time. I really I, you know, can sleep better at night knowing that my marriage is secure. Let me ask you uh, very quickly. We have seen in the in the off year elections, the the, the abortion referenda, uh, the the midterm elections, this issue of rights, whether it's 
LGBTQ rights, the right to read books, but mostly the right uh, to, to control your reproductive health, it's, it's bringing people out to the polls. It's motivating people. Absolutely. We saw that in Wisconsin this spring when we had a, yep. a Supreme Court justice who was up. And it is going to continue to be a pressing issue, especially in a state like Wisconsin that still has this uh, this law on the books that was passed in the mid 1800s. You know, and, and I know uh, that my opponent in the election is supporting a nationwide ban like so many and in the Republican Party. And that makes next year's, uh, next year's elections just critical in terms of the work we must do to restore our rights and freedoms.